All right, let me move on because I have more to talk about because we, we got to get into this J-Lo story. <laughs> J-Lo, girl. <laughs> this eclipse was kicking yo ass, J-Lo. First of all, as you know, J-Lo released uh, a new album. She also released a documentary. She also released um, that musical thing to go along with the album. But since she's done this documentary, people are coming out of the woodwork, accusing... Look, we've heard stories about J-Lo over the years being a diva, uh, not singing all of her songs. Well, there, there was one story that I didn't know about until now. So I want to share it here because I did talk about it on TikTok, right? TikTok, we talked about this already. But I wanted to share with our community because I know you guys don't follow me everywhere, but you should. So you're missing out. <laughs> Look, you're missing out. I don't remember to, to, to post everything everywhere. All right. All right. So let me just play this clip from Natasha Ramos who posted this. And look, Natasha has told this story before. So apparently Natasha Ramos says that she is the voice, the voice of Jenny on the Block, the song. And she did some more work on that same project. She also accused Corey Rooney, who is a producer and collaborator, consistent collaborator with J-Lo over the years. She accused him of saying, you know, give me a kiss and then give me a kiss with tongue. And then she refused. And he was just basically like, your career is going to be over. She says that she was only paid $3,500 for that, for the work that she did on that project. And she says, she accuses them of... Her, her then manager signing off on something that she never signed off on. And they were like, it's already been signed off on. But they did allegedly promise her other opportunities. Once you're a part of this project, you're going to have so many other opportunities. So, of course, when she told her story on TikTok, Natasha was asked, well, can you sing Jenny from the Block? And this is what she did. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a lot. No matter where I go, I know where I came from. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a little. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where I go, I know where I came from. From the Bronx! And yes, that is definitely me saying from the Bronx. No, I'm not from the Bronx. I'm from Connecticut. Pause. Why couldn't J-Lo say, from the Bronx? Why, why couldn't J-Lo say that? It's giving lazy. It's giving industry plant. Look, that's what people are saying about J-Lo now. They're saying that she's an industry plant. There is no, if you go back over J-Lo's history, there is no history of J-Lo being passionate about music. Passionate about dancing, but never passionate about music. And look, we know the stories of Christine Milian and stories of Ashanti, where they turn up their background vocals and use their demo vocals instead of J-Lo's. So, yes, this story has been around before, but now we have Natasha talking about it. But I don't understand why J-Lo could not say, from the Bronx. <laughs> and for those that say, I don't hear it, I don't, again, homegirl is singing this live, okay? She's singing this live. This is not studio magic, all right? She then gives us a moment of singing here. But that's my voice. That's me. That's me. That's me. Me. Natasha, we need some music from you, girl. We need some music from you. But that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. We have more to, to talk about in regards to Jennifer Lopez and why this eclipse is kicking her ass. Well, people are dragging J-Lo. And if you know, I like Jennifer Lopez. I don't know her. I like what I've seen of jo Jennifer Lopez over the years, okay? And she's a Leo. Look, look, look. <laughs> hey, Leos. <laughs> Oh, Janine says that Rosie Perez, who was the, you know, the head choreographer for the Fly Girls in, in Living Color. Janine says Rosie Perez and Kenny Ivory Waynes always said that she wasn't a good dancer. I don't know if I would agree with that because we've seen that's the one thing that I will always say. And you can't take away from J-Lo. Homegirl is a dancer. She is a performer. OK, 
So people are also dragging <laughs> people are also dragging JLo for her um her her deli order. She was like, I like a ham and cheese with this and that. And then she's like, and an orange drink. And if you know, you know. So people were like, girl, what is this orange drink that you speak of? So people have been finding all kinds of reasons to hate on J-Lo. Sidebar, J-Lo apparently launched this tour in cooperation with, in partnership for this project. All right. However, allegedly ticket sales have been terrible. So now they're rebranding this tour as sort of like, oh, she's going to cover all her hits and stuff like that. Damn, J-Lo. Damn. But there's more. So this story was actually told a week ago on TikTok. Shout out to TikTok, okay? But in preparation, I was already going to talk about J-Lo and the whole Natasha Ramos of it all, okay? Remember the Motown tribute that J-Lo did at the Grammys a few years back? Remember, a lot of people were like, why is J-Lo the centerpiece for this performance? Well, one of the dancers spoke out about a week ago on TikTok, and we've brought it here for you to see. All right, let me play it for you. I have a J-Lo story. The year is 2019, and I'm dancing with Jennifer Lopez in the 2019 Grammys. And she was asked to do the Motown tribute, and she said yes. As we all know, Motown is a record label, is Black-owned, a home to... The most iconic artists in history, Diana Ross, the Supremes, uh, The Temptations. Like, come on now, we know what's going on. I had worked with her previously before. I did a music video of her performances, I think Billboard Awards, some other stuff too, which, you know. Uh, I, I, it, it was cool, whatever. I was just very shocked she was going to do a Motown tribute at the Grammys, which is a award show for music. I walk into rehearsal the first day. Here was the first red flag for me. I walk into rehearsal the first day to the Motown Tribute rehearsal. There was only three black people, including myself. Everybody else three. in the room was white or other, you know, Hispanic, but there was three black people in the room, and that was the dancers. Okay, we're, we move on, we press on. I'm noticing that even when we're doing formations, like we're, we're being placed on stage, but I'm talking about us as far as the black dancers, we're being pushed away from the center, which is where she is. I remember this, like I really remember this moment. It was me and the other black dancer that were opposites. We were right, it was her in the middle and then it was us two. She said, they have to move, they have to move. Okay, we move past that, we move past that, right, we move past that. Uh, pause, why are we moving past that? They gotta move? The black dancers gotta move? For the Motown tribute? We probably now into like the third or fourth day of rehearsal, right? And that article came out saying, you know, why is J-Lo doing the Motown tribute? Like, I don't know if y'all remember that, but an article came out saying, I think it was like Variety, but somebody, something big, a publication came out asking why she's doing it. The, the team sat us down and they were like, I know you guys are seeing some negative press and blah, blah, blah. Chas, she gonna walk in and tell us. Y'all know what? We're gonna show them why I'm doing it. I remember she like raised her... <laughs> I was dying. I didn't know what was going on. I was so confused. I was so, so confused. Press on. That day of rehearsal was like actually easier. So like, I was just like chilling. At this point, y'all, I'm here. I'm doing my job. That's what I'm doing. Break for lunch, right? My hair at that time looked like this. So I'm there with the choreographer at lunch. We're all talking. I think Jennifer's there. She's talking to us too. Actually kind of being funny or whatever. And literally looks at me dead in my face. She goes, so what are we going to do with your hair? Oh, yeah, girl, I get it. Listen, Listen I, get I get it. Is my hair Motown? No. Ain't nothing, nothing about this performance Motown. Motown. Ain't no Mo, ain't no town in here. Hi, I just want to take a brief intermission from the story to remind everybody that there was a salsa breakdown. A salsa breakdown. Pause. I, wait, there was a salsa breakdown during the Motown performance? J-Lo. First of all, why, you, why are you um, monitoring this man's hair? Honestly, the braids still could have worked for Motown. I get it, but anyways, pause. Um, but you worried about my braids. Also, I want to be very honest. Like, let's be clear. I was, it was 2019. I was really in my professional dancer bag. I was trying to dance behind artists and do the things. So I'm happy that that happened when it did, because if it was 2024, mm. I went to my friend who's a hairstylist. Shout out to Tiger Bomb. He's the best hairstylist in the world. I love him so much. He 
basically gave me like a custom like Motown look because I was so scared. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get fired. Like I don't know what to do. So Tiger ends up giving me this look. And you can see which the I ended up loving. loving. So shout out to Tiger. What really gagged me is I'm over here thinking like everybody's gonna be doing like a Motown, like a vibe, like. Uh, but again, I'm, I remember what I said. There's only three black people, so I'm trying to think what's everybody else gonna do. Try to look at what they was doing. <laughs> and what really sucks is like the black dancers that were on the job were like phenomenal. Like I'm not gonna put nobody's name out there, but like the female dancer that was in the female section with all white and other females like she was whooping ass like eating those steps pushed out pushed to the side push 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 i'm doing my job hold, hold, on, hold, on, on. hold on pushed out pushed out are we surprised no we're not surprised because we've reported to you allegedly on tiktok as well where someone was talking about how j-lo allegedly found out if she if she found out anyone was a virgo she wanted them out of there She's a Leo. She didn't want to work with any Virgos. Now I'm really believing the Virgo story. All right, let me let me bring this back up. Is that we're on the job? We're like phenomenal. Like I'm not gonna put nobody's name out there, but like the female dancer that was in the female section with all white and other females, like she was whooping ass, like eating those steps. Pushed out, pushed to the side, push, push, push. Honestly, it was a line. She was all the way at the end. And I remember sitting on the side and being like, but not only, like, forget the fact that she's black, she's eating. And let's not forget the fact that she's black. It's a Motown tribute! So yeah, child, that's the last time Yenny from the block got any of my time, my energy, and, you know, ham and cheese on a roll with a bag of chips and an orange drink, if you know, you know. <laughs> Which goes back to what we were talking about. The other thing that J-Lo has been being dragged for in regards to her deli order. Oh, J-Lo. J and I like J-Lo. It hurts me to report on this, but as we always say, everyone here on the channel, no matter if we like you, can get it. Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> but this story actually hurt my heart because I was like, oh. Her being from, from the Bronx or not being from the Bronx or not really representing the Bronx, didn't really grow up poor or anything like that. And none of that stuff. I'm like, whatever. But this particular story, it hurt my heart because it's like, you have, you're in a position of power. You let your ego get in your way of being an actual ally for black folks. And that, that part of this story is very disheartening to me. Is that what you should have done was, I don't think this is a good look for me, y'all. I'm not Motown. My music is not Motown. But you decided because you're so career oriented <laughs> or, okay, let me just say, because you're so solely focused on yourself and, and what this is going to bring for you that you don't see that people are going to be like, girl, you're not Motown. You shouldn't be doing this. But look, she's a Leo. <laughs> no, Leo's. Come on, Leo's. <laughs> Because anyone else, like in your team, your team, like who are, who do you have around you? Yes, people, your team should have said to you, yeah, this is something that we should say no to. This is something that we should say no to. All right, but she didn't. And this was years ago. But to hear this story of where the allyship was lacking, because at the very least, the Grammys are at fault here as well. At the very least, you behind the scenes could have highlighted, even though there should have been more black dancers, well, okay, maybe you weren't in charge of hiring the dancers. Okay. You could have been like, you know what, let's make sure that we we highlight the black dancers here. And then asking about him and his hair, and then everybody else has a hair from whatever year this happened? Come on now. Come on now. Very disappointing to hear this from you, J-Lo, but this is why we should never hold any of these celebrities that are human just like us up to a standard than they're human. And we don't know these people. J-Lo, thank you for ruining this. One thing I will always say, though, I've never heard a terrible story about Mariah and her fans. Ooh. <laughs> Look, ooh. Or behind the scenes, to be honest with you. Ooh, you bring the I got the fuse.